a lot of people ask me questions regarding their past. And I just wanted to do a video here real quick and tell you what I do. Rather than searching through your past, because every time you, you go to a, a past event, that puts you at risk for recreating more of the same kind of energies. Okay? So, to really overly analyze bit by bit, moment to moment, even event by event, and try to figure out the why of it, sets you really seriously at risk for recreating more of the same. So what I do, having been on the other side, is I assume that everything that has happened was, number one, <clears throat> agreed on by me at some level, which is absolutely the truth. And number two, whether I can see it or not, it was done for a reason. Everything was done for a reason on one level or another. And maybe from this perspective, I may never ever in this lifetime ask the right question to see why something occurred. But if I operate from the standpoint that I agreed with it and it all happened for a reason, then I can let it go. And for me, that makes it easy to let it go. If something that is in the now comes up and it triggers a memory, or usually it's after the fact, usually I'll have something occur to me that is a something that's going on that I need to fix or change a perspective of or fix an energy regarding. And at that moment, I can see instantly in my past why that past event happened. I don't go back and relive it. I don't spend a lot of time going over it. I simply notice it in that instinctual moment. And what that does is time and time and time again that has happened to me. So now I'm to the point where it's easy for me to accept those two statements. Now at the beginning it wasn't so easy. I operated primarily off that knowingness from dying that I knew that everything had been agreed on by me. I knew that nothing happens to anyone or anything without its, its, its agreement. It's got to be approved by the entity involved, all of the entities involved. That is an understanding that I had almost immediately after I came out of body and was in the dying process, wherever along that line. I knew that immediately. It took me a little bit longer, I would say, to figure out that not only is it all approved by the entities involved, but that nothing is done for with without having a reason for it. Nothing. Now, that reason might have something to do with somebody else. That an event that happens with you or you doing something might have something to do with an agreement you've made with somebody else to play a role or a, uh, uh, provide a trigger a triggering event or a triggering moment for them. And that's the reason why it's almost impossible to figure out everything. Uh, some of the things that, that I've said and done that really confused me, now I know that those had to do with other people's requests, that it was for their benefit that I did or said or was at a, a certain place or time. But everything can be narrowed down to those two things, that everything is done with everyone's approval and nothing is done, uh, you know, everything is done for a reason. Every tiny little thing. Now I had an advantage, I died. So I got those two bits of information right away whenever I died. And when I came back, I always had those two things. I always had those two things that I remembered, that those were easy to remember. So with you guys, since you haven't had that near death experience, if you don't know those two things, you might want to go into a meditative state and start incorporating those into your belief system. It makes it much easier to accept the no such thing as good or bad scenario. Now, to get those two things, you have to believe that you are a creator God, of course. You have to believe that everything has consciousness, every one and everything has consciousness. I think it's easy for us to believe that every living thing that we perceive as living has consciousness. It's a little bit harder for us to believe that there's consciousness in everything as well. But there is. 
So once you get that everything has consciousness, every that you are a creator God, and so is everyone else, next stage is to truly understand that nothing is done against anything or anyone's will, and that everything is done for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. We are creative gods, and we don't waste time, uh, even though there's no such thing as time. <laughs> Again, weird, com weird conversation. But I wanted to incorporate, because those just came to me, that those are two things that I use all the time in doing the rest of the things that I do, is that total understanding that nothing happens against anyone or anything's will and that everything happens for a reason. So even the things that you might look at from your perspective that you don't like about yourself or other people, when you look at it from a different perspective, there is a reason behind all of it. And without there being a tag on good and bad, just creation, then hopefully you can relax into that moment. And if you need to go into forgiveness first in, or, in order to get to acceptance, then I say that that's fine. Now, I kind of jumped over that. Whenever I died and came back, I didn't need forgiveness anymore because I did understand those two points very, very, very clearly. So if in incorporating those two facts into your beingness, you need to go into forgiveness to get there, I say, go for it, whatever it is that you need to do. But eventually you will get to the point where you understand it fully that, that everything was accepted and everything was done for a reason. And when you do that, then there is no good or bad and there's no need for forgiveness. Now, the question at that point is, now that you've got these facts kind of as a baseline, how do you start creating consciously and that creating consciously is what gets you to 5d is to not do things just by rote which is why i've done the videos on shaking your your life up getting really really in touch with what really brings you happiness what really brings you joy and what really is interfering with that and for that sometimes it takes some tough decisions like I've said before, sometimes you have to reduce the interaction that you have with certain people that at least until you can draw a better aspect of them into your life. So you can remove yourself from being triggered that they're a bad person or that they're mean to you or that they're very negative so that you can visualize a positive aspect of them to bring back into your life, which absolutely you can do. There are very few uh, beings, people in your life that don't have aspects that are more positive aspects. There are some, don't mind you, they, everything is possible. But as you sort through your life and you find out what truly brings you joy, and if you're very, very, very serious about it, and you step away from any moment or any person or any activity that brings you down in vibration, that makes you unhappy, unhappier and unhappier as you step through that bit by bit happier and happier and happier then you will be able to access aspects of individuals aspects of your job aspects of life all the way across the board that will be more positive in nature which will be of a higher vibratory state and you can do that just about in every aspect the, the problem is, and the reason why a lot of times I say, you know, you, you, you should leave the area that you live. You should not interact with people who are really bringing you down. You should leave the job. Is not that, the, you, that it isn't possible to be in the job and finding, find a better aspect or a better aspect of that person. It's because you have a history in that place, in that job, and with that person so that you will be triggered by uh, a person's glance, um, their mannerisms, and you will go back to a time whenever they said or did something mean to you, which will send out that energy, which will bring that aspect of them that is a negative aspect into your life. It's not the person, the place, or the thing that needs to be changed. You are creating that aspect of person, place, or thing.
it's keep getting yourself away into a happier place so that you can come back into that with that person or that place of that thing so that you can see only a positive aspect and will allow nothing but a positive aspect of that person, place, or thing to be in your life. Does that make sense? So never is it the person, the place, or the thing that's the problem, if there is a problem. In order to, to, to create a better perspective or go to a collective that has a higher vibration, you've got to understand that it's you that's vibrating, matching the collective that you're with. So if the collective that you're with, whether it is the world or a singular person or a group of people or your job, if those things are showing negative um, aspects of themselves or locations or situations, then it, that is simply a mirror of what you on the inside are vibrating. So you must cl correct the inside of you first in order to take yourself to a collective along this time-space continuum that matches the vibration that you want. But you're not going to get that from the collective that you're in because that collective has agreed to be a certain vibration, right? So you can't change that collective. You aren't allowed to. That collective and those aspects, person, place, or thing, that whole backdrop of that play, that's the collective's agreement. You have to move yourself to a different collective. And you do that by you vibrating differently. Okay? And that's what you do by being happier and happier. You have to be happier and happier. You have to find out how you're being triggered into that lower vibration and stop that in order to go to a collective where the vibration is higher, where there's less pain, where there's less sadness, where there's less... Um, uh, abuse and fear and um, less not caring about each other and the world that we're in. You have to see those things being better. Know it in yourself. Do it yourself. And that will take you to a collective consciousness along the timeline that agrees with you. You will vibrate at that same, uh, at their um, level, at their frequency, at their range. And that will cause you to, to be, to change, kind of, it will look like you changed the world. But in reality, you're going to the world that has changed. Okay? Does that make sense? And eventually, as you walk through that, walk through that, you'll join 5D Gaia in all of its beauty and glory. And then, once you're there, then you can move up through there and go all kinds of different places. All right? Makes sense? Okay, guys, that's it for this one. Uh, I love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later.